Hello everyone, George here, and in this video we're going to take a moment before we jump back into Maya to start resolving more of these modeling and texturing issues to actually go ahead and add a script to one of our cameras, specifically the one that's going to be for Foxy. And the idea behind this is we need to record how long the user is actually watching, or, or more precisely, we need to know how long it's been since the user has checked that camera so that when we do get Foxy in here, or a variation of Foxy, um, we can trigger an event when they have decided to ignore that character for long enough. So let's go ahead and just create a new script. So project, uh, right click, create C sharp script. And we're just gonna call this um, time passed. Very generic name. I'll probably change it to something like uh, last camera look or time to last camera look, something along those lines. Now I could make this part of the camera script by itself, but I'll wait to consolidate things in the future. So time passed, we need our start, we need our update. So most likely what we're gonna have is a, is a, a, a getter, um, a public getter, but no way to set the value. So we're gonna to want to do a public uh, time passed. Well, yeah, I don't like the name of that. Let's rename this, right click, refactor, rename, rename, and let's call this camera time passed. We'll do that. So what we're gonna want is a public getter, but private setter. So let's do a uh, float time passed and of course let's do a get and let's do a private set perfect all right so we've got that public there we are so some other script or some other external entity will be able to grab the time that has passed since the user last looked at that object or last accessed that particular camera actually you know what this might this script might end up being generic enough for me to want to attach it to every other camera object in the scene. So let's go ahead and just grab this really quick. Go to camera controls. So right now camera control itself doesn't do anything with regards to knowing that it's been selected. But if we go over here and take a look at the camera manager, the camera manager does. Let's reload all there. So each one of them has the public camera object. So I can either make it so that this object holds an array of floating values to match the cameras that we have. That would, that, yeah, that would be a way of doing it, wouldn't it? So let's, let's try that first. Let's do protected float array of camera, camera watch time or camera time between views, which is really what we care about. Now in Awake, when we set up this entire thing, we can go ahead and create that object. So camera, Time between views is going to be equal to a new float array. The size of that is going to be equal to the size of cameras dot count dot length. There we are. We're going to want to populate every single one of those values, of course, with a default value of zero. So let's just do a for loop really quick, set them all up. Let's do four. So four and i equals zero, i is less than uh, cameras dot length i plus plus we'll do camera between values i is equal to 0.0f so everyone's initialized and set up properly so start we can ignore and then we have our update function which is where we're waiting for some stuff to happen within update we're going to want to let's do a void update times or update uh, camera watch times and what we're gonna to wanna to do is um, the camera that's not active is the one we're going to want to ignore. And every other camera that isn't active is the one we're going to want to increment in time. So we can do that with a for loop. Just copy this one right here. And we will do We'll add to that each element time dot delta time. Um, but we want to make sure that we have a case where if, let's see, i is equal to the, what do we call it? What, what is our current, current camera? Uh, and we want to continue at that point. We want to ignore processing this part and incrementing its time. Although what we can do right now is rather than getting terribly sophisticated with it, we could just continually set that value to be zero if we wanted to. We could do camera, yeah, let's just do that. We'll grab this guy here, put this one right there. And um, we'll do 
is equal to 0, 0.0 f. We're probably going to come back and revisit this and re redo how I handle this in the future, but for right now this should at least give us the ability to um, record what's going on with each one of these cameras and know what the time is, the time between looking at it. So we should probably create some sort of a debug mode where I can visualize using a GUI all this stuff on the screen and what my current time inter uh, intervals are and watching them reset. But for right now we're going to be lazy and we can just do a debug log. Log and we're going to do camera and then the number so let's do plus i dot to string ah yeah that would be a problem this guy up here make it one lagged one with everything that way I do hit it regardless of which cameras there um, yeah and actually what we can do as well no, no let's do it this way let's put this one here and we'll put another debug line in here and this one will say active camera as opposed to all the other ones okay let's go ahead and unity now let us now it's on our camera manager, which means we don't need to do anything, so we hit the run button. We should get spanned with a lot of crap. So there's our cameras, and there's time continuing on and on and on. Let's see, where's our active camera? So let's move through these different elements and actually see if anything gets reset. Oh, okay, I see the problem. So let's go back in the Visual Studio, and the issue is it should be plus equals time dot delta time, because right now we're just storing the general time. There's our values resetting, and of course our values continuing to increase with time. So is it keeping that message at the top? Yeah, there's act active camera 4, and it does because I have it condensed, that's the problem. Okay, good to know. Because the list was condensed, it went up to the top and it got stuck there uh, for the remainder. So let's just hit that again now that I don't have things collapsed. And we should see the active camera popping up. Yep, it does right there. And now if we clear this out and we just start moving through it, we should reset all our values back to zero. Perfect. Great. Okay, so now we have a very simple uh, way of tracking the time between looking at each one of those cameras so we can implement Foxy later on. Thanks, everyone.